Hello everybody, I'm Cheryl Tally Moss and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how my grandson Brian and I decreased the size of the garden bed in our greenhouse. We're also going to show you how we use our leaf mulcher to mulch leaves in the garden bed. And also, we're going to give you instructions on how to transplant Tiny Tim tomato seedlings in a container. Okay, let's get started. Hi everybody, today's Monday the 9th of March. And we're working inside the greenhouse. And in the last video you saw that keyhole, move back to it Ryan. You remember the keyhole opening that was right here guys? Well, Brian, move back a little bit. We are uh, back. Unless you want people to see you have on my shoes. Yeah. Brian came over. Oh here Lord! Why that boy know. got on lady so shoes? I put on my old shoes so that he wouldn't mess up his new boots. It's spring break for him, and he's helping me. We picked up all of these bricks that was in this keyhole opening, all in here, and then we recycled them and put them here. And now I have to dig up the soil behind the tomatoes all around that trench. We digging that up so that I can have the space. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, guys, this has been a hard job. I am almost finished with removing the good, healthy soil. I know that I'm giving up some good real estate in my garden bed. But in the long run, in the future, it's going to be best for me. So if you look close here, where my finger is pointing, that's the shiny soil. That's the soil that used to be my lawn. I don't want that. I want the good soil that I've been building up over the years. I gave Brian a break. He was looking for a smaller shovel. He insisted I have one, but I don't. But I am going to buy Brian a small shovel. So whenever he wants to help me, he can have one that uh, is fit for his size. And I'm also gonna buy him some garden shoes. We're almost finished. Brian is back now and he can help me put the bricks down, but all the digging out of the soil, I did. And it's a bad time to be doing it, but a good time. Those of you that have been with me for a while know that I had uh, trouble with water uh, during our rainy flooding season in the spring. Uh, uh, running up under the, the garden bed and that's why we bricked it in and and that's why some of the uh, pavers have been moving because it's water up under there guys but I'm a power wash off everything this summer and get the mud out of here and get it back like it used to be and resurface it again with sand like we did previously so uh, yeah we're gonna come back down here with the bricks and then we'll take a break right that I harvested those carrots right there while he was taking a break and also I uh, retransplanted the society garlic Brian you see that clump over there and over here and I put some over here right there okay good job after you place each brick as close as you can then I want you to step on it so that's what his job is today and he's gonna get paid a little bit more than I usually pay him today because it's a muddy job and he has not complained not one time. So step on it. Very good, Brian. Step on it. Why she got that boy stepping on them bricks? All he has to do is go in the storage room and get the rubber mallet. <laughs> he said, Big Mama, you showed them the shoes in the video. They don't care. Okay. All right. We're out for a minute. Okay, gardeners, Brian and I are through working for this afternoon. You want to wave down there, Brian? This may not look like a lot of work, guys, but it is. As you can see over here, we haul wood chips. I shoveled all the dirt out. Brian and I haul wood chips, and I spread them out over here, and we use big pieces because we won't be walking over there. And then I planted one more green, one more tomato plant right there in the middle. I'm gonna need you to straighten up all the bricks. They look messy. Six growing in the greenhouse, and I planted some more um, seedlings. The uh, what do you call them? Marigolds and zinnias. So I think I'll put another zinnia right here. 
and then we'll be done. We're gonna break, have some lunch, and then we'll get um gonna come back and do the wood the uh leaf mulch. Are we gonna do that today or you want you wanna wait until tomorrow? We need a little bit more wood chips and leaf mulch. Correct? And I I wanna do the leaf mulch tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay. You're the foreman of the uh job, so we'll do the leaf mulch tomorrow, guys. So we're gonna say bye for now. Bye for now. Today's um Tuesday the tenth in March and we're gonna tip some leaves up and and then we're gonna put it in here. In here, where is here? Uh, in the garden bed. Very good. Thank you, Brian. Okay, Brian, can you tell us how we're going to shred these leaves? Um we're gonna um put these leaves in um the machine and then we're gonna turn the machine on and then they're gonna come down here. And what are you gonna do with them when they come down there? All right, so we're going to cover all of this up. And I mean, our tomato plants are looking beautiful. Okie dokie. So, Brian, let's get started. Okay. Just putting the leaves in there. And by the way, guys, if you didn't know, your fall leaves are the best because they have been gaining nutrients from the mother source, the tree, the branches, all year long. And when they shed in the fall, those are the richest leaves. Okay, so now you're gonna go behind there and turn it on. should have got a bigger box Brian but we can go in the house and get the dustpan and the broom and sweep those up and then put them in the big box there's a big box back there uh, by the compost the pen compost bin yeah we should have used that box but for right now you can just go get a um, broom and dustpan dust thank you so I'm sweeping the leaves into the dustpan we can use that dirt in there too that soil and then you are going to go all the way down there we'll start at the back and work forward and then just uh -uh, don't drop it then spread it around the plants so i pick it up you can and just sprinkle it like you like to do <laughs> but you can go faster <laughs> good job brian and start back here in this corner okay just pick it just stand up with you. Let me show you. You don't have to actually pick it up with your hands. Go ahead. Put it over there. All around that marigold plant. No, no. Over here in the corner. Over there in the corner. We just take some and knock it off the leaves. Gently. Knock, knock it off the leaves. Gently. Yeah. Great job. Now we can go get. That's cool, Brian. That's cool. Uh huh. Now we can go get that black top, and the next time we'll use the box. Slide the black top out from under the mulcher. And Brian came ready, guys. He brought him some shorts, long socks, some comfortable old shoes, and he has his nice pants and boots in the house. And so now we're gonna put this down here. Don't put it on top of a plant. Okay. Very good. And we're gonna move the brick. Oh no! It's I okay. Think it's getting loose. It's okay. We can sweep it up. And then we're just gonna drop it, and you can spread it. Say, Big Mama's back. Big Mama's back. Mm hmm And I like how careful Brian is with the plants. He takes this seriously. He is protecting that society garlic that I transplanted, pulling out any bad rocks. And go ahead, Brian, and just take your hands look, and just gently push some of this up on the better tomatoes. Yeah, and take this out. This is a clip. Okay, so now we're going to do what? Put we're the box. Make some, oh. Yes, you're right, say it. 
we gonna make some more meat leaf mulch? Mulch? But well, we're gonna put the box under it this time, right? Look yeah. in the camera. We're gonna put the box under it so it won't be um, messy. And uh, we're gonna make some more. And we'll come back, guys, when we finish the whole thing. Okay. Right? Put the box under there. I am just wanna share with you that this soil is so rich because. I've been adding organic matter to it or natural ingredients to it for years. And so I don't need to add anything else to it. I don't need to put any, uh, you know, I don't use uh, chemical fertilizers, but I don't even need to put any organic fertilizers in it because it is so rich, it's going to be fine. The only thing I may have to add will be some calcium. and they have gotten wet and they've been breaking down and when I realized there was too much water in there, I pulled the water out and brought them into the greenhouse because they, are, they have already been breaking down and that's why they are so uh, moist and you can see they're breaking down. And also, if I was to have designed this uh, mulcher that I got for my birthday for my kids, I would have had something here that connects like a flap to keep the uh, particles from uh, going up in the air. So we improvise. We're always thinking of things to improve. Right, Brian? Right. So you want to turn it on? Yes. And uh, Brian knows not to... And Brian knows not to ever put his hands in here while it's operating, while it's on. Right, Brian? Right. What will happen if you do? Your hands will get chopped up. <laughs> yeah, and we're not gonna have that. So, we're gonna put these little pieces that get stuck because it's wet. Adjust this dial a little bit. Let me see, is that better? Yeah. We want to, we want to knock everything off and let me make that a little bit weaker. I mean, uh, yeah, a little bit more force. We want to knock everything off of the um, tomatoes. We don't want those wood chips on the tomatoes. Good job. That's perfect. And you can water down there, Brian. Do not water the side, the walkway. Just the water bed. Just the wa just the bed. Very good. Please don't water the walkway now i don't know if you guys noticed that we removed the shade cloth from the sides and we're gonna let the uh tomato plants and everything in this bed get full sun uh from here on out they're acclimated and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plant some tiny tin tomatoes in containers we'll be back Okay, gardeners, now I'm going to transplant some Tiny Tim seedlings into this pot. I think it's about a five or six gallon a pot, but these Tiny Tims are determinate tomatoes. There are two types of tomatoes, indeterminate and determinate. And determinate simply means that they will all ripen around the same time. And once they have produced the the enough tomatoes they will stop and they won't produce any more indeterminate and pan over there Brian to this garden bed pan over there these are all interdeterminate tomatoes meaning that they'll keep producing and producing and you will get them at different times these are interdeterminate tomatoes meaning that they'll keep producing until the conditions aren't favorable it'll get too cold or too hot or too dry or not enough water but they'll keep producing but I usually uh, try to uh, harvest all of the tomatoes that I plan to harvest before July, sometime in the month of June, because it will be too hot in North Texas for the tomatoes to flower. Once that temperature goes above 90, 95 degrees, you can forget it. You will still have your tomatoes to ripen that have already set fruit, but they will no longer 
produce any more flowers. So last year I went to Disney World with my family on a vacation. And what I did was I got a head start on these tomatoes in the greenhouse and I was able to harvest everything before June 5th, I think it was. So my goal is not to harvest everything by June 5th, it's, it's to harvest everything that I can to preserve or give away before the end of June. Okay, so now let's pan back over here, Brian. So here is one of the tomatoes. I have three seedlings. One, two, three. And there's plenty enough room in this pot. Can you look how deep, the, show how deep the pot is, Brian? I'm going to tilt it. Show it all the way to the bottom of the pot. Get in close. Follow your hand. So that's pretty deep, guys. So it's, it's enough room. So I'm going to put one here, the biggest one toward the middle. I'm going to do like a triangle, like so. And I hate wearing gloves because I love the feel of dirt on my hands, but today I'm going to use just one glove. And you, you're showing the roots? Yes. And I'm going to dig a slight little hole, and then I'm going to drop it. And I'm going to do another one here. You see the roots? And dig just a little hole because I don't want to bury them deep. I want them to have plenty of room to grow. And then we're going to put the other one right here. Are you still fil filming? Yes. And this is the biggest one, so I'm going to hold it right so. Piece of paper there. Oh, I see a lot of roots. A lot of roots in all of them. Now, we will go and get some fresh compost and put it and fill it up to here. That's so you can't hard. feel anything. So I'm going to pinch these bottom um, leaves off. More power to the people that wear gloves. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. It's best to wear gloves. But I can't feel anything, and I love to feel the dirt on my hands. And I can actually feel what I'm pinching. So we took those bottom leaves off, and Brian, I'm pushing them down a little, just a little bit, so I won't have a lot of air pockets. And Brian and I went and got some good compost and mixed it up with some old potty mix. And uh, we're just gonna add some to it. Let's see, I don't have a shovel handy, so I'm just gonna scoop some up like this. Move the rake, please. Okay. Thank you. And we're just gonna fill it up. You wanna rake some in there for me? Break it into here. Okay. I'm gonna have to go in the house and get the shovel. Get a small little shovel. Yeah. It's easier when it's on the ground. Yeah. You hold it. I'll get it. Okay. No, you hold this. Way. And I'll get it. And follow me wherever I go. So they see, because in this video I'm gonna say how to transplant tiny Tim tomatoes in a container. So newbie gardeners wanna know every step. You feel me? Yeah. Okay. And you see where I pinched off those tomatoes, leaves? You just leave them in there. Or just compost. You got it? I'm gonna smash it down a little bit. Get a little bit more compost. And when your soil is real rich, like mine, you don't have to add a lot of ingredients to it. Because my, my containers and all my garden beds have real good soil that have built up over the years because I put worm castings in it. I put azomite rock dust which have 92 trace minerals in it. I also feed my plants comfrey tea that has everything in it that a plant needs to survive. If you're not growing comfrey you need to do so. Make a liquid fertilizer. Chop and drop method of fertilization with the comfrey. Uh, I have videos on you can check my catalog. 
but uh, yeah, we're just gonna put all this in here and tap it down. And guys, we're good to go. And a little bit more over here. That's a little rough. Well, I don't know if I'm going back to my childhood or what, but I love playing in dirt. You like Actually, soil, but I like, it reminds me of when I was younger. You like um to be Peppa, Peppa Pig? Peppa she Pig, oh, they play in dirt? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Now, Brian drops the wood chip, not wood chips, but leaf mulch over there. Yeah. And you're going to sprinkle that leaf mulch. That good right here, Brian. No, no, no. You, you're coming over here, sweetie. Okay. You're going to put it over in here. You're going to pick it up with your hands. Okay. It's the best way to go. And we'll put this mulch down. No air pockets. I'm patting it down. Go ahead. You don't want need the big pieces, just the little pieces. All around. If you drop some, I'll help you. Just drop some right here. Go ahead. Drop some more right here. Just keep dropping it, and I'll help you. Good job. Now we're done. But put, put the rest since we have a little bit more. We need some right here. Need some right here. This will hold in the moisture. And then when I shoot it with that comfrey tea, don't put it on the plants. If you, the number one cause of getting some type of fungus or blight, or any type of fungal infection on your tomato plants, is having wet leaves. Now I know I wet those over there, but they're gonna have plenty of time to dry because when we get out of here, the fan is going on, right? And I'm putting that fan right on those uh, tomato plants. So now we're gonna take some rainwater, and you know where I keep it. Okay, we're just gonna put a little bit, little at a time, on the outskirts. And we'll let that go down. And the soil was really damp already, so we don't need any more. And we're still gonna protect these in the greenhouse, so. I'm gonna put them right over there next to that pepper plant. Okay guys, I wanna end this video by sharing with you that we put two fans on uh, the raised garden beds. We moved the citrus trees outside and we're gonna share that with you in our next video and how we intend to build up this garden bed with compost. And we put the fans on so that we can completely dry the tomato leaves and start drying the floor out. So we're gonna be tracking mud. It's just been a very rainy season in North Texas and pretty soon it'll dry up and then we'll be in a drought. Don't you make another video until you get all this darn mud out this greenhouse. And store water. Here are some of the tomatoes that I harvested before and on my vacation last year and the bottom picture is what they look like when I returned. So we're very excited about that. This year we probably uh, won't have as many tomatoes because I have a lot still canned and I'm not planting as many. Thank you for watching everybody. Bye now.